everyone, the message you are about to watch is a message preached by Bishop Opu Deli Eze. This message is packed full. It's that it is anointed, it is fire right, it is loaded, and it has the capacity to put you on your throne of enthronement. I want to encourage you as you watch this message, watch it with faith in your heart because God will impact some great measure of anointing in your life. Yokes will be broken, chains will be destroyed, walls will crumble as you watch this message. I want you to watch it with faith in your heart and trust God that every situation in your life will turn around for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Happy New Year. This meeting, it will be a testimony. I hear your amen, you are hungry for it. You lift up your hand and shout your amen, you are hungry for it. Acts 2 47. Praising God. And having favor. Can I have you shoot favor? With all the people. And the, and the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Come and have your way in this place. Father, throw your weight. Stretch forth your hand. Heal the sick. Deliver the praise. Let your word come with power, with precision, with holistic transformation. The entrance of your word gives light and let it give understanding to the simple. Illuminate us, enlighten us, send forth your word and let our life never be the same. I hear your amen. You are blessed. All right, you be seated. God bless you. Welcome to church. And I believe that God is going to bless you in the next. 45 or 50 minutes yet about and then you will be blessed. The Bible said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them appeared before God in Zion. Your appearance in Zion determines the strength you showcase to a dying world. He said and God appeared again in Shiloh by the word. How God appears before men is by the revelation of his word. So the revelation of God's word tantamounts to the appearance of the same God. Why? Because God and his word are the same. Are you trying to find God? Find God by the revelation of his word. Brother John said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and this God, and this word became flesh and dwell among us. Jesus said in John 6, 63, for the words that I speak unto you, this was a spirit, and this was have life. Can I have you shout amen? We began a journey in the first, the first service looking at the baptism of supernatural favor. That's my topic. The baptism of supernatural favor. And uh, as a way of blessing us, I made it clearly and made it obvious that the scripture is a compilation of ordinance in operation. And I said ordinance are sacrosanct biblical injunction that God has instituted from the foundation of the earth so that when you intentionally use to aid, you begin to be an unusual capital manifesto of the greatness and riches of his glory on the earth. Job put it this way. He said, have you learned the ordinance of God so that you might produce the dominion on the earth? Fasting is an ordinance, prayer is an ordinance, sacrifice is the chief of them all, and a whole lot of them. Now, one of the ordinances that can change a man, I told us in the first service, I said, hard work minus favor equals hard life. Hard work minus favor equals hard life. Now, hear this. For every miracle to happen, for every scriptural possibility there is a corresponding human responsibility. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. He said, for the labor of the foolish man, we are at every one of them. Why? Because they know it not how to go to the city. Every injunction, every promise of God, there must be a 50% commitment from God, from man, so to say, 
if you are going to walk in the practical, realistic dimensions of them. The Bible put it this way. It says, every house is built by some man, but he that builds all things is God. Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God, the exponential, the intangible, is God breathing upon your commitment. You know, many times people say that God is a promise-keeping God. Well, the holistic truth is that God is a covenant-keeping God. You know what it means? Covenant is an oath sealed by the commitment of God that when you put your own part, he put the seal of his blessing. So actually, what God keeps is not promises. What he keeps is your obedience to the covenant. Am I preaching good? So I would like us to realize that favor is that thing that God, I'm going to give us two that I had six in the morning, but because of I'm trying to compress too many things in this service, I'll give you two for your perusal. Number one, favor is an expression of God's mercy that makes you receive something without really asking for it. It is an expression of God's mercy that causes you to receive something without really asking for it. For the blessings of those who are here in the first service. Now, look at my best definition of favor. To be favored means to be given unusual kindness. Write it down. To be favored is to be given unusual kindness. You are giving unusual kindness. You are giving unusual acceptance. You are are giving an unusual access to things, places, people, and opportunity. I'll take it again. I said to be favored means to be given unusual kindness. By the power in the name of the Lord, 300 of you, you say amen, you will receive unusual kindness. From that till you leave it, anywhere you turn, people will show you kindness. I said people will show you kindness. You lift up your hand and shut them and it becomes a reality. People show you unusual acceptance. I have seen the gifted that is limited and the anointed that is not invited. So one of the things that makes you to become the signature of, of your world, commanding global attention, is to be accepted. I'm going to be praying this into your life. There is something that is called the oil for acceptance. And the next one is unusual access. Where they say no to people as you appear, protocols are suspended. Because a bigger than you is following you. Favor is a mantle. And I pray, 300 of you today, it will land on your head. The things that used to be difficult by the efficacy of favor shall be a cheap walkover. I said to be favored means to be given unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, unusual access to things. You are given access to things, to places, to people, and to opportunities. Now, I, I want to look at how to walk in supernatural favor. A dear divine oppression via divine intelligence coded in the word of God that a believer can have access now, the word baptism means baptizo from the Greek root mythology. It simply means to be immersed into water, to be immersed into a thing. Now, think of a foam that has water. Now, practically, if you look at it, one thing is the foam is in water and the water is inside the foam. That is how favor will enter you. And you too, you will enter favor. What I mean to say is that after now, you and favor shall be inseparable. Am I talking to somebody? I said, after today, you and favor shall be inseparable. Favor shall be the natural escort of your destiny. You believe in power, lift up your hand and shout, I am favored for life. Okay, let me drop it as in the heart. How can I command favor? Favor, the word of God 
is a compilation of principle and it is the principle of God's word at your disposal that makes you a principality. Ecclesiastes said, how beautiful is light. How sweet is light. And how beautiful is for the eyes. Arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord. I pray for you as I release these kings you will walk all the days of your life on the earth. You shall walk forever under supernatural favor. How do I connect it? Number one, deliberate obedience to God's instruction. Deliberate obedience to God's instruction. Do you want favor to be the natural escort of your destiny? You must learn how to be obedient. Hear this. Divine instructions are not meant to be negotiated. Divine instructions are meant to be obeyed. Yes, Seller. Divine instructions are not meant to be negotiated. Divine instructions are meant to be obeyed. No one who negotiates and trivializes the relevance of divine instruction via obedience can be able to compel the workings of favor. Genesis 28, 1, 2, and 3. Quickly. Genesis 28, 1, 2, and 3. Quickly. And Isaac called his son, Jacob, and blessed him. I bless you too today. And charged him. That word charge means and commanded him and instructed him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife. Out of what? The daughters of Canaan. Verse 2. Arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Betua, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from things of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Are you with me? Verse 3. Can we read like Mass Choir? And God Almighty bless thee. Why will God bless thee? Because you hearkened and obeyed to the voice of the Father's instruction. And make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. The Lord spoke to me recently during one of my contemplations. He said that when a man obeys God, that heaven in turn rewards you with a blessing that money can buy. Put it down. When a man obeys God excitedly, pressure-free obedience, he says, heaven in turn gives you a blessing that money cannot buy. The reason you see a lot of folks in church today, they struggle and they are even getting angry with pastors, suspecting prophets, thinking that everybody is faking it, is because they've not been able to pay their own part. If you are willing and then you are obedient, then you shall eat the good of the land. The good of the land responds to you as a flow of your natural, intentional, deliberate exposure and submission if you are still with me shout hallelujah so number one way of flowing in the realms of favor is that you will not only be a do a, a hearer of instruction you must be a doer lift up and say father I everybody lift up and say father I receive grace to obey your instruction no matter how difficult it is, if you say amen, favor has landed. Amen. Number two, learn the art of honor. Learn, you want to command favor in every area of your life. Learn the art of honor. What is honor? Honor is the designing, celebrating, and we are necessary. The rewarding of men for their uniqueness. The reason why a lot of people are not working in favor is because they trivialize and play with the concept of honor. In life, most of the 
basic disappointment we feel in life is as a result of whom we fail to honor. Every struggle in life is traceable to dishonor. Dishonor to God, to his servants, of men and mentors that God has put over you to serve as a platform of influence. You know, the, 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 the Facebook has given everybody the headphone free to talk anyhow, and so even talk to their pastors of on online, my pal, and hang out. And uh, you see, you, you don't trivialize honor and profit from the same. You don't trivialize honor. There are men that must be honored. Honor is the seed for access. Honor is the seed for access. Honor is the seed for access. There are people. They don't discern people's greatness. They don't discern grace. They think that all of us are the same. Yes, by fellowship, all of us are the same because of the finished words of Christ. But in authority, we are separated. We don't have the, the same authority or the degree of manifestation because of separation in authority. Everyone here must learn to honor people. Honor people that are ahead of you, celebrate them. It is not hero worshiping, it is called honor. It is discerning, it's the art of celebrating and where necessary, rewarding uniqueness and graces and impartation. The reason why a lot of people are bereft of divine helpers and destiny to, uh, helpers is because of the last dishonor. As I'm talking to you now, I want you to search your heart. In the last seven years, are there people that have shown you kindness? blessed you, turn your life around but right now you are not in talking terms. People that gave you a platform for elevation and today you can't even see and talk. Whom have you truly dishonored? I would like you to run down the memory lane in the last five, seven years. Are there people in the, in the sincerity of your observation that has truly helped you but right now you are not talking with them. It could be your father, it could be your mother, it could be your elder sister, it could be your, your first son, it could be your ex-pastor. or what, I mean, there was a time in the flow that we are dear to help you but right now some things, some waters have passed through the bridge. You are no longer in talking to them but there was a time they really helped you. That is a seed of dishonor. So the reason why a lot of people find it difficult for the earth to yield to them is because they have planted seeds of dishonor. One of the things I did when I turned 40 is to go and make bridges. The day I, the day I turned 40, the Lord said to me, son, make more friends than you make enemies. So I intentionally begin to reach out to some pastors, to some fathers in the faith, to some people. Somehow, I strength, some of them, it took me sacrifice. It took me, uh, hello, sir, how are you? Ah, prophet, you called me today. I, I reached out to all of them, including some of my sons, who were supposed to be my pastors. They left me, broke my ministry and all those things. I called them and I mended ways. Because as we get older, the number of your friends should be more than your enemies. Somebody lift up your hand and shout, honor. honor. Shout it again, say, honor. honor. You must discern people. You must place them where they are. And you must show them that you truly care. I show us a scripture. If you are catching my flow, shout, amen. amen. Romans 13 and verse 7. Romans 13, verse 7. The Bible said, render therefore all their want, all their want, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Did you understand that? So you want to be a commander of favor, having unusual access to kindness, acceptance, and unusual favor, then you must know how to honor men. Number three, align to God's passion and body. Align to God's passion and body. God has a business on the earth. 
And the business of God is called souls. Souls, souls, and more souls. The only thing that can make God to sign in into your endeavor is to show him that you are a partner in his business. I told you, I saw in the scripture that there is so much joy in heaven when one soul comes to the seven knowledge. You know, there is this scripture, many a times we have, okay, put it in perspective or context. I, I want to show us what that means. The Bible said that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, let me put that scripture in context and in perspective. What it simply means, if I do those things that produces joy in the heart of God, he will give me strength for exploits. That's what it means. He said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You don't really understand what they're talking about. Putting that scripture in context and in perspective, it simply means if I intentionally, deliberately look out for the things that makes God joyful, he will in turn supply strength for my exploits. Deuteronomy 8, 18, for it is I, the law, that give it the strength, power to prosper. For those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. If you are with me, shout hallelujah. Now, Jesus said, for my father is with me. And they asked him, how, he said, for I do those things that pleases him. So, pleasing God is one of the ways of securing favor and God's presence. And how do I do that? At least I know one of them. One of them is so winning. Jesus said, there is groove, there is parry in heaven when one soul comes to the seven knowledge. So, if I'm an educated, intelligent believer, what thing I need to do to get, to get strength from God for exploit is that I should keep giving him souls so that he can be able to empower me. You are not saved to sit down. You are saved to save others. One capital measure of your maturity in Christ is in the ability to go. Show me John 16 and verse 15. God wants you to be a soul winner. You need favor. You want open heaven. You need supernatural explosion in every area of your life. You need to be an intentional soul winner. Lift up your hand and shout, I hear you. John, 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 John 16, 15. 16, 15. Okay, 15, 16. 15, 16. Lift up your hand and say, Father... Everyone lift up your hand. As I'm talking to you, the Lord told me as I was praying in the midnight, he said, son, as you'll be teaching people, I'll be releasing mantle of favor upon them. So I am not only sermonizing, I am releasing mantles. Catch one as, as I hear you say amen. Okay, take two as I hear you say, but I amen. John 15, 16, quickly. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have ordained you. Some say, I am ordained that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. What fruit is there? Is it purple or guava? No. He's talking about the precious fruit of human souls. That was ever now. On the template, I'll now show you favor. What kind of favor will I show you? He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give it. If you are with me, I will give it. So immediately you get so for God. And you say, Father, give me money. Money appears. Father, give me car. Cars appear. He said, when you do this thing plainly, intentionally, and deliberately, and now from the place of alignment, you ask me for things, I will give you more than things. So that is the reason why most of you are not working in favor. You are not, you are not, you are not dealing with God, his business. You know, my greatest passion now is souls. His souls. I mean, you need to see how my soul is burning. I've been around, I've traveled around, preached across continents. Uh, I've been a blessing to the nations and I can tell you, the only thing that makes life meaningful is to bring souls to God. You, saw, you see this thing that make God to become a man? Eh? For God so love, talk to me if you're a Bible student, for God so love 
that he gave that whosoever shall not but have that thing that made God to become a man and died, that thing must be. You know, they told us that the, the last wishes of a dying man is awesome. The last words of Jesus before he has said, he said, go ye to the world and make disciples of all. Help me tell somebody. Jesus said, go ye and not sit ye. And I'm looking at, help me tell somebody. Jesus said, go ye and not sit ye. Told you something. Hey! Jesus said, go ye and not sit ye. If you sit here, you will expire. When you go here, you go global. Friends, for he that with it a soul is foolish, frustrated, poverty stricken. What the Bible say? So it's wisdom when you bring souls. The Bible said in the multitude of the people is the king's honor. That people, they are his souls. He won favor cheaply, commanding unusual glory. Then, it's been said that the commonest type of evangelism is what we refer to as frangelism. Friendship evangelism. What does it mean? F means friends. R means relations. A means associates. And N means neighbors. Can I hear you say frangelism? If you're hearing me and you're not sleeping in the spirit, shout frangelism. Shout it again. Say frangelism. So you must align. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye the kingdom. Seek ye the kingdom. And his righteousness. And all that things. How many things will be added? This all this is favor among them. Going to Canada. Is it part of it? Going to London to do your PhD. Is it part of it? Come on, if you are ready now. If you know what has just wave your hand. Dedicating your estate in the next one year. You follow? Good life. You follow? Handsome bubble as your husband. You follow? I therefore declare, as you seek the things of the kingdom, may God add all things to you. If that amen is hotter, you are blessed. So my desire, as long as I live, is God, help me to pleasure you. And one of the cheapest ways to do that his souls. You know, this morning as I was dressing up, the Lord said to me, son, you want to see wealth like water? Put your money in souls. Aye. Put your money where? Put your money where? Say it again. Put your money where? You know, he said, anything that brings souls to me, invest in it. He said, I will give you gold as dust. And I've given somebody key for wealth. Key for what? Key for what? How many of you wants to be monificated? I mean, you want to be chocolatey with 75 fingers. Chocolate. With how many fingers? I pray for you. As you engage God, may heaven answer you. May heaven answer you in the name of Jesus. He said, put your money. Put your money in soul winning. Put your money in buses. Buy but anything you can do. He said, I should invest in souls. That was what God told me this morning. And I know he has given me a secret. Anything you can do to make sure your friend, your neighbor, your relation comes to the saving knowledge of Christ. That is where favor is provoked. Somebody at a shout of your loudest amen, you are coming into favor. <laughs>